Yes, is it just uh, I just take uh, one permission from Dr. Rom Prakash and uh, then we'll start now. <coughs> yeah, good morning, Jerry sir. Good morning, everybody. And uh, uh, on behalf of GIP journals and uh, on behalf of MSCO uh, 2016, here uh, I'm Dr. Divedi. Welcome you all to the second day of the international conference on the ancient mathematics, science and computing. Yesterday, we had a started wonderful session. Uh, eight papers have been presented from different locations in the world. And uh, two uh, invited lectures have been given by Dr. Majura and, uh, oh, and Dr. Kusumdeep was uh, in person, she was not present but she had sent her audio recording and best wishes for the conference. It was really a great experience yesterday because people presented and attended the conference from their place from, with their comfort. And uh, with the help of this technology, we were able to collect everybody at one place and uh, good presentation and the judges had queries, judges asked the questions from the audience, from the participants and the participants answered the question. Good question and the session went on yesterday and we had done the full recording of the, uh, uh, of the day. So uh, by the grace of God, now the second day started and uh, today uh, we have with us Dr. Jerry Luftman from New York. Doc, uh, he, he is going to give us uh, and uh, trained setting lecture of the IT trends and its impacts on the skills. As we all know uh, in India and everywhere in the world, now uh, industries and governments are giving more emphasis on the skills. Along with the degrees, skills are more important sets because with a skill only, people can generate the employment for the others also can generate the business also. So I think this lecture is going to be a, means a good eye opener for all of us and the people uh, who are in the decision making um, uh, authority, they can also get the benefit from this thing. So I will, uh, I will request Dr. Uh, Jerry Luftman to start his presentation and the people and if anybody have the query and if they want to ask some question from Dr. Jerry, so uh, you can note down the question or you can send me in the chat box the questions and after the presentation over we will uh, open the session for everybody. I think things are clear. So now may I request Dr. Jerry to start his presentation. Sure, thank you. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, talk about these IT trends. Um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I basically, I'm a retired IBMer, and I was at IBM for over 20 years. And at IBM, I was a CIO and owned multiple products at IBM, as well as was part of their uh, customer executive education center, where they brought in the senior level executives from the largest companies in the world. And my last job at IBM was to help them start their management consulting uh, practice. I left IBM when things weren't going quite well there and basically was dean and professor at Stevens Institute of Technology where I started their graduate IS programs and I was there for over 20 years also. So I had this strong desire to close the gap that I'm going to talk about with you uh, shortly that exists in the skills in IT professionals around the globe. And the gap is basically one where universities, with all due respect, are not as responsive as they need to be. And universities tend to focus on the technical skills, and they don't really focus on some of the other skills that are so important for a successful career in IT. So with that, uh, I've now had my company for about four years now, and since we started, we started with just face-to-face, -face, but now we have our own cloud and we are growing dramatically. So the thing that's interesting in the 45 plus years that I've worked, the thing that's interesting, as you all know, the world has gone through profound change. Everything has changed in the world. 
the technology has changed, the uh, economy has changed, the world as a whole has changed. Everything has changed but me. So you can see me when I first joined IBM as I've grown to what I am today. So the thing that's interesting is again, everybody, everything has changed but me. I'm still the same. I look the same, act the same. Ha 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 ha. Um, what, one of the things I've been doing for over 25 years, maybe 30 years, is, is, is global IT trends. So I've been taking surveys primarily from CIOs, but oftentimes I get CEOs or other senior non-IT executives involved to not only gauge what's going on, but to take a look at how things uh, are evolving, have evolved, as well as to project the future. So I'm gonna give you a taste of one segment of the research that we have done. And if you wanna get uh, the uh, entire report, it's on the website that, uh, that I sent out and you can have that, you can pull out uh, the, uh, the complete report that gets into all aspects of the trends that uh, we've been doing. And again, it's global. So what we've done is we just don't look at North America or the United States. We look at India, we look at Asia, we look at uh, Middle East, we look at Africa, Latin America, and we compare uh, the different geographies. So it's pretty insightful uh, in getting a good feel and preparing for what's going on. So if we take a look at a, a, what I consider a wonderful picture that illustrates a very important set of messages, this is a real picture from Popular Mechanics in 1954. And in 1954, they projected what the home computer was going to look like in 2004. <coughs> Excuse me. So there are very important messages. Now you can take a look at what this personal computer looks like. I mean, this is the mouse, the keyboard, the monitor, the icons. Now, it's pretty close. <laughs> to what we have today, except it's also very different. So I don't know about you, but my wife wouldn't let me have a computer like this in our house. It wouldn't fit. And I don't think we can handle the electricity that's required. Uh, but the thing that's interesting and the important message in taking a look at something like this and anticipating and looking at trends and research is, well, we know for one, they're kind of right. But think about 1954 almost 50 years, right? Ahead of time, they knew that there were going to be home computers, but they were wrong and they thought it was not going to happen until 2004. And we all know that personal computers were available uh, you know, well before that, 20 years before that. So the important message is in, in looking at where technology is going, number one, things are in the labs, in research, in engineering and design. 30, 40 years, well before they are released into the industry, into, into the field, we know whatever they're working on initially is wrong. And perhaps more importantly, whatever they're working on is gonna kind of be right, but how it's adopted and how it's supplied and used is totally wrong. They typically will never, ever, ever have any idea how the real technology is going to be adopted. So it's a, it's a lot of nice messages that are conveyed by this real picture. But then we think things are really changing dramatically, right? So, but you take a look at a picture, you know, we all talk about selfies. This is from 1920s. Selfies isn't a new concept. I mean, people were doing selfies forever. You know, so some things are changing, but fundamental things don't really change. But we know what's going on with Watson. This is a real picture of, of me playing Watson. The only thing that's not true is the score. Uh, I was invited to play with Watson because one of the jobs I had at IBM, I owned artificial intelligence way at the beginning. So they invited me uh, to be part of a steering committee to talk about Watson and more importantly, how Watson could be really applied in industry. Uh, and as you may or may not know, I mean, it's evolved dramatically from the initial Jeopardy games. You know, the technology is getting you know, much, much faster, much, much smaller, and it's now available on a cloud so everybody could access it. 
and there are real productive um, applications underway in, in just about every single industry. And this is clearly the wave of the future. Um, not just big data, not just internet of things. Um, it's really going to be, and not just analytics, it's gonna really be cognitive computing and robotics process automation that's going to be the next wave of technology that are gonna revolutionize and change how we uh, all do business. Well, but we all know one of the fears behind a lot of discussion that's taking place is, well, is robotics going to help us or is it gonna put us all out of work? And that's a, a topic for another day that we could probably spend <laughs> multiple days on 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 talking about it and, and it's again this is still like that pc that i showed you that really nobody understands the true implications of, of robotics process automation and what the real long-term implications are going to be i'll be we do know it's going to happen we do know it's going to have a major impact and and likely revolutionize all of us and all of our jobs much like personal computers have has revolutionized our entire uh, uh, careers. If you take a look at, at, at what's going on around the globe, and it's true around the globe, if you look, starting with the ecosystem, we know that since uh, 2007, the economies around the globe have had major, major impacts. Some countries, some geographies are started earlier, some started later, but, but the economies around the globe have had significant impact and it doesn't seem to be any end in sight as we all well know we also know that the world is, is clearly interdependent every country is interdependent on every other country no country can stand on its own the sourcing models is, is totally different than anything we've ever dreamt of uh, we know that uh, outsourcing both onshore offshore near shore whatever shore uh, is growing and we and the research bears that out in the growth of, of what's going on from a sourcing model and we also know that the, with the advent of the cloud for example the entire organization of IT in the future and it's starting you're starting to see it now is going to be totally different than what we see today where in the past we used to have everything in-house well now more and more of the less critical things are going to be uh, done by service providers, uh, especially infrastructure, and typically the trend is more and more just in-house will be the, the more strategic revenue generating initiatives. We all know about what's going on with wars and, and, and the impact of security. As you'll see, security is one of those things that's both on the, the most important management trend as, as well as the most technology trend, uh, most important technology trends, and it's been pervasive and persistent you know, for the 30 or more years that we've been doing our research. Regulation, politics, well, we don't have to say much if any of you look at the papers of what's going in the United States with the election. Well, politics is, is universal around the globe and, you know, some, some countries have more difficult times getting things implemented and the bureaucracies involved to get things in, in, uh, implemented, you know, sometimes are real hurdles to uh, success. Natural disasters with, with, with tsunamis and hurricanes and typhoons. Um, you can argue whether it's global warming or not. We know that more and more the natural disasters are on the rise. And a big, big message, that's a big, big change that's impacting IT around the globe is, is the focus on revenue, revenues and profits. I mentioned, you know, the, the economic conundrum with the recessions that have taken place, but this is the first economic downturn that we've experienced. Um, we've had dozens in, in, in the time that I've been working, but this is a very different type of a, a, an economic downturn from an IT perspective in that in the past, the CEO would go into the CIO's office and basically tell them, I don't care what you do, cut your budget by 20%, 30%, just do it and walk away. This time it was very, very different. In, in 2007, when it first hit and then it followed uh, across the different geographies after uh, North America, this time the CEO went into the CIO's office and said, I need you to work with the business to help identify opportunities to leverage IT 
to reduce business expenses. This is really a significant difference in, in, in what transpired in the first, uh, in, in previous recessions, because you know, now they weren't asking IT to cut, they were asking IT to be leveraged to reduce expenses across the company. Then some two or three years after that, something else happened that's really profound, and that is the CEO went in and basically asked that same CIO to work with the business to identify opportunities to leverage IT to generate revenues. So this is like hallelujah moment. This is terrific. This is you know what I've been working for for you know my entire career and getting IT and business to work together in alignment and, and getting IT to really be part of the revenue generating initiative. And because of that, the whole role of IT has changed significantly and, and the whole transformation of every business, every industry in becoming an IT company that's, that's being uh, enabled or driven by IT changes and the relationship between IT and the business is essential. You no longer can IT sit and just be techie nerds, you know, programming or doing some technical things. They have to be business people who can work closely with the business people, but at the same time, the non-IT people have to understand enough about IT to be able to work with the IT people to ensure successful initiatives. So any one of these things would, would you know, cause people to you know, not be able to sleep at night because the, every one of these things are so, so significant, but they're all happening at the same time. But at the same time, we are you know, being, we're seeing more and more new technologies that are you know, driving the changes that are taking place in our industry. Smack, social, mobile, analytics, and cloud computing are all integrated, all have to be working together in concert, all have to be integrated with the legacy systems, all have to be related to the business and make sure that the business understands how they could leverage these technologies for, uh, for profitability, to stay ahead of the competition. Internet of Things is a driver for, for the analytics and cognitive computing. The, we mentioned you know, robotics process automation, <coughs> excuse me, Cognitive computing is the next wave of, of new technologies that's going to, again, have an even bigger impact on industry, business, and society as a whole. Bring your own infrastructure. I mean, everybody's got, you know, one of these things, right? I mean, we can basically, you know, do everything we need, you know, right from our iPhones. And then we cause some confusion because the CEO basically says, how come? I could ask my seven-year-old son or daughter for a new app and they can do it in about two minutes. And if I ask IT for something, it takes, you know, two years. I mean, it's a changing world and, and business is basically losing their patience with IT. Security is, is, you know, we talked about before. We can talk a lot about 3D printing. And obviously everything has to work with our legacy systems. So you could take a look at any one of these things individually and their impact on industry and IT is really significant. But all of these things are happening at the same time, at the, with the same time all of these ecosystem things working. And because of all of these changes in the ecosystem and technology, the, the need for IT and business to work in harmony is essential. And, and the key elements that we know have to be worked on, all of them have to be worked on equally to ensure the alignment and cohesive working nature of IT and business to ensure that we're addressing the, these changes and these changes are, are, are effective, effective communications between IT and the business, where IT and business understand each other, can, can work together. How we demonstrate IT's contribution, recognizing that the value is not IT, recognizing that the value is not in the infrastructure of IT, the value is not the applications that are running on the infrastructure. The value comes from how the business changes what they do, take advantage of the applications that run on the infrastructure, and 
the businesses are the ones that have to drive that change. IT can't drive that change. They call it a business case. They don't call it an IT case. So we need to get business people working with IT people to ensure that the uh, ideas are recognized, are deployed, and the value is attained. Governance at a strategic, tactical, and operational perspective, and ensuring, again, IT and business are working together to make the important decisions about how to invest in IT and what initiatives to do, what initiatives not to do. All implies a strong working relationship, partnership between IT and the business. Technology, recognizing which technologies we need to de deploy, how we get them to work together, but more importantly, how we get them to work together with the business. People, that's what we're gonna talk about for the rest of uh, our time together uh, this, uh, this morning, this evening. So I'm often asked, you know, what are the major headlines by when I'm interviewed by the, the press for the research? So some of these I've already touched on, but basically, more and more, you know, we, we're seeing IT now being uh, a, a major part of the revenue generating part of a company. Key emphasis on the social, mobile, analytics, and cloud computing and the security of the entire environment. These are the areas that are most important that, that are taking place right now. We are seeing even, you know, though we're not out of the woods with the economic conundrum, we are seeing budgets hiring salaries are going up but going up cautiously because companies are still a little hesitant about how quickly the economy is going to turn around we know the split of the budget is basically about 60 40 60 percent of the budget is on people 40 percent on things whether it's in-house or or outsourced we know that the most of the budgets are domestic but it's going down a little bit, and we know that offshore outsourcing is increasing, right, wherever you are. There are many of us who basically, with all the changes that I've alluded to before, are, are basically see that perhaps in 10, 15 years from now, there will be no CIO in a company. In fact, there might not even be a separate IT department, because IT is becoming part of the business. And the business is IT. So IT and business are becoming merged into one thing where some of the non-strategic things are being outsourced onto the cloud with service providers. And having IT and business work effectively together is critical to the future. So things are moving ahead, but with caution. Overall, Here's a summary of what we just said. You know, IT is clearly reshaping every company, every industry. But sourcing is a problem around the globe. One of the biggest complaints I'm hearing, especially from IT leaders, is their people don't have the right skills. They've got job openings, but they can't find people with the right skills. And again, the right skills aren't just technical skills. I could take a, a C-sharp programmer from Bangalore or a C-sharp programmer from Brooklyn, and they're the same. The technical skills are about the same. What companies, what leaders, whether they're service providers or uh, industry companies, are looking for people that have those other skills of business, leadership, management, interpersonal skills, so that IT can work more effectively with their business partners. I'm not gonna go over this chart, you'll have this chart, but here's a summary since 2004 of the key things, key concerns, things that keep CIOs awake at night. And again, IT and business alignment have, has been up there as well as security for almost forever. Uh, these two are standouts above and beyond everything else on the list. And then there's another big drop off after uh, globalization of IT. But clearly these two are hot, 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 hot. So again, you can look at this list and, and, and we're gonna get into the skills. But here's the skill shortage down here, right? 
If you look at the key technologies, the top three, right up here, with business analytics, has been hot since the, uh, the, the, the millennium. Again, you'll have this list and you can look at this list and we write about it in the papers that'll be available to you from our web. But there's a skills gap, okay, of what industry is looking for and what's available. And basically, you know, we call it the T organization, but it's not just the technical skills, right? Not that the technical skills aren't important, but they need the other general skills from a business management perspective and interpersonal perspective. And these are the kind of things that, that industry is really concerned about because the technical things are not as complicated as these things. And in today's world where IT is now becoming part of the business, if IT people can't work effectively with their business partners, or if IT people who are service providers or consultants can't work with their clients, it's not going to be very successful. So here's a two pages of the major skills that are required from CIOs, middle level managers, and new hires. And look, take a look at these are the top ones, this first page. But basically, you don't get to technology until down here down here nothing else is technology and this is what cios are looking for the people who are cios mid-levels or new hires okay so technology i'm not saying technology is not important but these other skills are the ones that industry is really concerned about and when we get down to the second grouping of of 20 that's where you see more of the technologies but still it's way down the list Technology isn't, is, is important, but not as important as, as these other skills. The other thing that's really important, and my research bears this out also, we've known for a very long time that the IT professional needs to understand the business, and, and we've talked about that. But we also know, especially in today's world, that non-IT people need to understand about IT. And that doesn't mean that a non-IT person needs to know how to design a database or write a program. The kind of things that non-IT people need are these kind of things, right? How to make decisions. What are the implications in making a decision regarding IT? What are the trends in IT and what the impact is going to be on their industry, right? How do they effectively work with their IT executive team, what their role should be in sponsoring and champion IT initiatives, and what are the human resource considerations that they have to be aware of. All essential, and in most places, we've done three programs with Global 1000 CEOs this year alone. And the CEOs are very frustrated in not really get, having a place to go to get this, and that they're, even their business people don't have these skills, let alone the ability of the IT people to, you know, to have the skills that we've already talked about. So how do we bridge the gap? That's, that's the reason I started the company that I, I have, not to do technical training, but to basically focus more on the IT management skills that are sorely needed. And hopefully <coughs> we'll have discussions over the next couple of weeks with some of you to see how we could uh, bring those programs to your constituents. So basically what's happening, and then I'll turn it over to you uh, to ask whatever questions that you'd like. But if you take a look at from ancient history, when we started way back in, in the six, late 60s, the focus was optimizing just IT, focused on the technology, how IT could run the back office as things evolved. And the focus was more on how we did things, not what we did. The focus was purely on the technical things. IBM was the, 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 the only one in town to do, uh, to do work with. As things evolved, we started to get more and more into the front office applications, but still more of the support part of the front office. It was focusing on more about what's possible, not just what's needed. So IT was starting to, you know, get its head 
uh, out of the water <coughs> with business and, and getting more visible kind of initiatives. And in, in, in we have cases that talk about this, although it wasn't pervasive. But now it's starting more and more to transform the business. And in fact, more and more IT is co-adopting with co actual paying customers and clients as IT now becomes an innovator along with the business. And that's really where we have to work on the things that we talked about. These are the, that's the reason why the skills that we talked about are so important. It's not just the technology. So IT is, is evolving over this time period from an, not just an enabler of business change, but also a driver of business change. And it's also an essential element in every company's comp you know, beating the competition and being a revenue uh, generator. So this is where the world is, has been and where, where it is, where it's going. This is the kind of thing that we have to prepare for. And, and you know, I've said it before, I've said it one last time. And, and again, we've got to help the business understand these things. We have to help our IT friends understand these things. We have to help our service providers understand these things but they also have to recognize the skills that are necessary to succeed. So all of these things going on, all of these challenges going on, it's never been more complicated than it is today, but I'll tell you this, it's never been more exciting than it is today. There is no better place to be than IT, and there's no better place to be than IT in the foreseeable future, because IT is where the action is. IT is the thing that's gonna really make a difference in every industry and and being a faculty member or being engaged in whatever capacity in the IT industry is really where you want to be and I tell you I don't want to miss it that's why I'm still working because I love the action and I love being part of preparing people for the challenges that lie ahead and they are challenging but again it's exciting and it's the best place to be so I'm going to stop and give you a chance to ask any questions that you'd like uh, me to discuss uh, and, and leave it there. Yes, sir. Wonderful, sir. Uh, even the non-IT people like us, they can also understand very easily um, the presentation and the trends. And these things are very, uh, really important, as you told, uh, from the front uh, from the back office service provider now they have become the uh, running the business also that is the show okay uh, sir you can stop sharing the screen so that uh, i can involve everybody for the question answer also okay yeah so you can just stop sharing so everybody will come yes yeah, sir thank you sir so uh, anybody uh, if you have any query you can raise the hand like this or you can uh, just raise hand in your system also so that uh, Jerry sir is here after his uh, wonderful talk he is ready to answer the questions or the queries from your side uh, let me unmute uh, yeah Om Prakash sir yes yes yeah Om Prakash sir can you hear me if everybody's talking, I can't hear them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, doctor. Uh, Dr. Via Lakshmi Gorti is here. She had uh, she, uh, she had joined from NMIMS University Mumbai. So uh, she, yeah. So Madam, do you have any questions? So uh, after this wonderful talk that we have seen in NMIMS also, and I'm seeing here also a lot of you know emphasis on the IT and uh, merging the IT with the non-IT people also, so that we can run the show efficiently. If, it was a wonderful uh, uh, talk by Dr. L uh, Jerry Luftman, and uh, uh, we really uh, were uh, getting some good ideas from his talk. It was uh, very um, educative as well as informative, sir. Thank you so much. My pleasure. It's nice to meet you.
Uh, sir, uh, here um, uh, we are the faculties and uh, we are not trained in the IT, uh, IT but uh, as you know, uh, now to, uh, to meet up the large demand from the students and from the other stakeholder of the uh, education, education institutes, uh, management uh, sometimes not giving training for the IT tools and uh, you know uh, sometimes they directly expect from us to uh, means uh, adopt the technology and then respond to the students so this training aspect is so many times missing for for us hello yeah Jerry you're sir. breaking up it's hard to hear you i'm not sure if it's just on my end uh, yes yes i was telling that uh, uh, means IT from supporting the business from the back end now it has as uh, I have seen from your presentation also from supporting now it has come to the main uh, driver of the business okay sir so the the biggest challenge coming in the uh, in some countries for the infrastructure because we are more uh, means interested taking this tool to the uh, means uh, underserved or to bridge the gap uh, between different factions of the society. Well, you've got a tougher tougher hurdle uh, from, you know, again, I've been to India maybe a dozen times or so, but the problem that you have, like a lot of other uh, countries in, in uh, Asia, Africa, is you have to build that infrastructure at the same time you do the competing applications. You can't just, you certainly can't do some of the uh, leading applications if the infrastructure isn't in place. So